Okay, talk a little bit about uh, how much video games has has in the merged with Scholastics and uh, and the opportunities presented for gamers. Well, it's changed dramatically in the last couple of years. It started out as you know kids doing this at home, and then now schools are recognizing these are kids that normally don't participate in any kind of sport, any extracurricular activity. And right now, I have 24 members on my esports team, and only two of those actually play sports. The rest of them would be home playing games. Instead, we're here at school playing from other schools. Uh, right now, our NBA 2K, which basketball, he doesn't play basketball, but he's ranked eighth out of 62 teams in Kentucky. So we play Mario Smash, Mario Kart. Kids that I played when I was little. I mean, maybe not that little, but you know, uh, we play Madden, we play Rocket League, we play League of Legends, and they can get, it's recognized as an official sport in Kentucky. They have to get physicals, they have to keep their grades up, they have to come to school, and we promote it with the programs just like we do in football, baseball, basketball. You know, we belong to the Lead em Up program, we do community service, so it's technically, it's a real sport. Now, now I know when the guys go out on the football field, there's a lot of hitting, there's a lot of physical, a lot of physicality that goes into it. How do these guys practice, so to speak? Or how, how do they get better other than playing? They play each other. They play other kids at, at this level. Um, they practice at home. It's the, the ones that play, they're behind us, they're playing now, they play Madden constantly. And actually, they play against other football players. The football players are here kind of just watching them, see what they do. But, you know, it helps that they know a little bit about football. But they probably been playing Madden since it come out. You know, so it's just that they get to do it here. They get to play T. Like I said, we got to – right now we're playing St. X. So we're Caverna 1A playing a 6A school. So we'll see how it winds up. Right now it's 3 nothing. so we'll see how it winds up. How, the, how is that different, you know, when you compete on in a virtual world than competing in the real world? Well, one, it's less wear and tear on your body. Right. Uh, but like I said, you still have to get your physical. It's still that mental anguish, and it's you against somebody else. So it's one against one. So therefore, 1A versus 6A, the classes shouldn't matter. Because it's one on one. It's you against somebody else. It's not you against their team. It's you against their best player. What do you say to parents who, who are more old school, who see this as as who don't take this as a sport, so to speak? We've had a couple parents that uh, don't think that we should be playing video games at school. We had a member that had to quit because that's what their parent and you know, it's just it's a new age, you know you either get with it or get lost. I mean I don't know, maybe that's not the right thing to say, but you know it's this is a change of times. This is what people are doing. People outside of Play VS, which is Cage's Double A's platform, people can play games for months. I mean, outside of this, they do this at home. You can play people in California. There's one company out of California. You can actually get money from winning the tournaments. So this is a job to some people. So where where is this program at in, in comparison to other programs across we the state? Had, this is our first year. This is actually our first. Um, my, the guy that I talked to said most time they don't start. They only play spring. And we thought it would best go ahead, let's get the bugs out in the fall, and we're ready. But we're competing now. Like I said, we're 8th in NBA, we're 13th in Smash. Um, Diego, I think last week, was ranked 18th in Madden. So, you know, we're ranking because these kids are good at it. Now, the way we practice, we just come in here as a group together. And like I said, we got kids that don't do anything else. And I bring them into school, and... They get that socialization that they wouldn't get if they were playing by themselves at home. Now, what was the process for getting this program up and running? You know, I know you had to buy the consoles and different things like that, but what, outside of that, what's the process for getting a program like this established? It's a learning process. Um, I talked to the um, coach at Hart County. I went and talked to him. I 
I'm coaching basketball. What's his name? Uh, Lions. Mr. Lions, and he told me what they did. I started this probably, this process started last August. And we continued, got information. I did a couple of uh, Google Meets, learned about it. We researched. I talked to a guy from Play VS. Probably talked to him, Google, four or five times. Uh, talked to Ms. Sable, the superintendent. You tell her, this is what I need, this is what I need. And I'm the kind, like, he recommended we only do one sport. And like I said, you say it's more than, I mean, kids are more interested in playing more than one sport. I mean, it's, the only hard part for me is getting it all started when we start. After that, it, it's this. And then I just, but as for coaching, I talk about it's different than just playing your best friend. There's strategies. I mean, there are strategies in playing Madden that you normally wouldn't do. You got to find out what is the best offense to run. What is the best? So then, you have to scout teams. You have to do research on what is the best offense. What's the best defense? You have to find out what's the best team. What's the best players? How can I stop this player? So it's it's kind of like in football where we coach. Like we watch film to see how we can beat the other team. They have to figure out how we can beat any team that comes up. Now, you talked a little bit about uh, uh, playing in the fall. I mean playing in the spring. How does the season run in it's, this? Okay, there's a, they actually have two seasons. They have a fall, winter season, or fall, okay. winter season, they have a spring season. So there's two seasons every year. So we'll be able to compete in state championship in the fall, and we'll be able to compete in state championship if we make it to the, in the spring. How, how um, prevalent is eSports in uh, um, high school athletics well, across the uh, state? I, all I know is like I look at the numbers of Here how many teams are – sponsoring the last uh, meeting I went with the ADs uh, most every game have at least 20 schools in each game and that's what it takes you have to have at least 20 schools t to be able to have a state competition okay. so right now every sport I think except for there's two sports we're not doing we might start those in the spring it's Splatoon and Hearthstone it's I don't know what they are but the kids want to do it so if the kids are wanting to do it I'm gonna figure out how to let them do it and that's what it is. I didn't know nothing about Smash Brothers or Rocket League or none of that. I had kids come show me, this is what we want to do, and I'm, we're doing it. So that's what it is. They come to me and they say, I want to do this. Let's do it. Now, what kind of, what kind of you know, I know when, when in traditional sports, you look at a kid and be like, hey, you need to come out and try out for the basketball team. You're tall. Uh, you get a guy who's, who might have some size. You say, hey, come out and, and, and play some football. How how do you scout your your uh, uh, yeah. athletes in esports? That do we, they come to you or we had a sign up? I put a big piece of paper. These are the sports we're offering. If you, you look at a guy's it, hands and say, "Oh, you can look you, like you can control well, it." Well, it's what they know. If you want to play it, you do it. Now, hopefully, as this catches on, we might have tournaments and pick the best players. So Madden can only have I can have two teams, but only one player per team. Okay. So later on, if there's like 10 kids that want to play next year, then we'll have a tournament and I'm going to pick the best two. So that's how it works. Like NBA, there's one player. If I got more than one player that wants to do it, we'll have a tournament. You got kids that say they want to do it, but then they realize it's a commitment. Every Tuesday, we do Rocket League. I mean, League of Legends. It's not changeable. Every Wednesday, we do Smash Brothers and uh, NBA. Thursdays we do Mario Kart, Rocket League, and Madden. So the schedule never changes. Four o'clock every, boom, boom, every all all year long, until uh, state champion starts happening. But like I said, it's the commitment thing that I really like that part of it. The kids that you know, like real life, you have to commit. And and here it's not the physical, it's the mental, and be able to be responsible and say I'm going to be there every time. And of course. With every sport, there we can have subs. We can have a bench where if one person's sick, we can sub somebody in. And we've had to do that quite a bit. But like I said, it's new. we got kids like uh, I got two subs a day for Mario Kart that normally I almost had to get a sub for Madden, but luckily football practice ended and we was able to get them in here. We was about two minutes from having a forfeit. But, you know, that's what you have to deal with. You know, they, if the kids want to do it, we're going to do it. Talk a little bit about about getting um, involved with the with the esports and what made you what made you start. Uh, what made me start yeah. was 
I was always a gamer. I could, uh, once I was eight, I got my first console was a Wii U from my dad, which passed on to me from my brother. And then a PS3 and then a PS4, right now PS5. But I was always a gamer at a young age. And when I heard there was a eSports community here, I decided to give it a shot. Why not? Now, how cool is it to have an eSports program here at Cavern? Honestly, pretty amazing. I never heard of an eSports community in any other school. In Florida, there was not an eSports community where we're from. Mm -hmm. uh, they were always like saying uh, gaming should not be associated with school. But in my personal beliefs, a uh, game should be used to encourage kids to be able to learn more properly and entertain them instead of doing like sitting in class 24-7 or during 7 hours. It will be a lot more entertaining for kids to actually be uh, doing things instead of just sitting around and listening to a boring lecture. Now, tell me... Tell me, what do you think? What do you think this program or, or esports programs help kids to do? It brings the community together and helps uh, people actually connect from different schools. So there's more of a rivalry and hoping that the next day you'll finally get better and better to win this competition that they're having. Now, what? How competitive have you been? And and I guess. How did you start out and how much how much did you grow competitively in this program? Honestly, I did not play a Mario Kart before. I mean, I played it snippets since I was more of a console PS4, PS5 kind of guy. But uh, after joining this uh, tournament with uh, this community, I've gotten a whole lot better. Where, where do you see where, where do you see this taking you? What 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 are your goals for, you know, participating in this? Are you trying to get a scholarship? Are you just trying to be a a, a better gamer? Are you looking to be a professional gamer? What what? I am looking to be a professional gamer and also uh, being a YouTuber. So this will help uh, people on the side and also me if they want to aspire to be someone they used to admire. Talk a little bit about, you know, just participating in this other, how, you know, how the kids have, have embraced this program, how I guess it has helped this school, um, it's different things like that. In my opinion, uh, I've seen a lot more uh, encouraging in this pe uh, field of people than any other uh, normal uh, gaming franchise. As you know, there's a lot of trash talking all of it. I do not hear it anywhere over here, which is a sign of relief, but also uh, encourages hospitality and uh, sportsmanship, which is always good in game games and tournaments. Instead of being jealous about uh, one another, we actually embrace our differences and skill levels. So do, what types of games are your favorite? Um, and I guess has that changed since you've been involved with this program? Uh, my favorite games are COG and Red Dead Redemption. Mostly single player games since I admit I'm not good at online games. But over uh, the few weeks I have been here, it's definitely gotten better and better. Talk to the coaches and stuff through this. So this is theirs. We got game three. And we talked to the coaches through here. And then, like I said, I got to see what match right now. We've got three matches going on. And then I'll talk to the coaches. And then, so like I said, as they're doing that, I'm talking to coaches. Um, I'm reporting results. So at the end of this game, I had to report the results who won and who lost. Um, as for this game, we're doing this Mario Kart, so I'll rewatch it. So, like I said, it's when it starts slowing down with less games, but at the beginning, there was, we had five games going on. So, but now we got 
three. Wait. <laughs> what is? I guess what are what are the plans to expand this, or or what what are some of the things that is being talked about to to build this? Well, hopefully, word of mouth, the kids seem excited. You know, we got kids coming and watching. Uh, hopefully, word of mouth will get more people involved. Uh, there's only two more sports right now we can add, or two more games, two more sports. But uh, other than that, two more games and then. That's about all we can do until the until the state realizes let's add another sport. But they're trying to keep it away from true violent games. Uh, Smash so Call Brothers, of Duty, first yeah, person shooters, things like that. Can't, none of that. Um, Smash Brothers is probably the most violent. There he is. Splatoon is a shoot 'em game, but it's paintballs. So League of Legends is like a D and D Warcraft kind of game. You know, other than that, it's. It's not violent, no gore. It's just. What, where do you see? Where do you see this going? What do you? What do you see oh, this in ten years? The sky's the limit. I see them adding more sports. I see more kids that don't do anything coming up here uh, because we're going to actually get this wired to where we're totally a separate entity from the Kentucky server, so we can sit there and be our own thing. You know, it's pretty much the initial cost is up but after that what so give me give me a ballpark of what what a startup cost would be. i could i just know that the price of the playstation the price of the computer okay. so like these computers i'm not sure about the price but you know this will last until they go back you know so league of legends has to have five players so we had to have five computers okay rocket league has to have three players so three computers uh, Madden, we can deal with one controller. One, we could have handled with one system. It would have been difficult, but since we got two systems, we can play two teams. Uh, switches, we have two switches. Some of the kids that play this have their own. They bring it, so it's just, I don't, I mean, I don't know what the, the limit is with the technology. When, how far and how fast it can go, I don't know. What's, what's the, um, so with different platforms you have uh ps you have console i mean uh um pc how do you approach which one they're gonna play on it's just what they like i mean like i said i got kids that like the nintendo you know which you know the mario stuff like that that don't play the man so they don't even try out for the man they like the mario they got kids like the man and that don't do the mario so it's you know we got the, the uh, platforms are Nintendo's, uh, PlayStation, and computer games. They they strongly recommend not Xbox for whatever reason because the stage is played on PS, so that's what they recommend us use. My name is Weston Scott. I have, well, EA Sports has just now started up this year, and it's been something that has been able to get me out of the house ever since I moved uh, away from my old friends. Um, esports is something that's keeping me up and I can get a scholarship and it's keeping me out the house and it's a social thing and it's a good thing for me. Now what can you say about you know this this program and how it's I guess it's brand new here how have things been been going getting started? I wasn't here to set up the room or much, but uh, it must have been tough on Mr. Gower. And he's not getting paid for any of this, but he's keeping it strong and alive for all of us students here that are keeping it alive, too. Okay, we'll talk a little bit about, about your uh, your competitions and uh, what games you play and uh, some of your results. I've played a few of them. Um, what are your favorite games? Say Rocket League and Super Smash Bros. Okay, did, so did you play those games before you got involved in the esports program, or were there some, some I, things that you learned? I played Rocket League before, but I was not really great at Smash Bros, but this is giving something, and it's 
make me better and I'm having time to sit and just hang out with my friends and be competition. And how, how has being in this program helped you to grow? You know, how, how have you gotten better? Not not just um not just in in the in the in gaming, but just in life in general. How does this help to build build uh, I guess towards your future? I used to live in Cave City. And I was like right next to my friends and almost every day I would go right after the bus. I'd go home, get what I need to do, and I would be gone all day till the street lights came on. But slowly everyone started moving and my friends are still down there, but I was the unfortunate one that had to go. I didn't move too far away, but I wasn't enough for me to just walk down there. See, when I moved, I wasn't really me anymore. I would just stay home and sit down and not really do a whole lot after school. But this involvement is keeping me after school. It's more social with everyone, and it's just helping me stay social. And that's a good thing for me. Now, what would you say to the criticism from parents who say that video games shouldn't be in school? What, what would you say to those parents? I can see some of them being right, but it really depends on how you view it as a whole. Uh, like some games, sure, there are very violent ones, but this program does not feature those. They try to keep it on the low with us. We don't really have anything violent that's outrageous. No, like everything here is rated for kids. So what, is the, what are some of your goals for participating in this program? What are you hoping to get out of this? I, I might get a scholarship and all that, but I don't really care for much of that. I just want to be here with my friends and spend time with them. Being here doesn't make me want to be competitive like everyone else or most people. I see that, of course, I can get scholarships and go to good colleges and all that. But the real deal for me here is just to be social with everyone. Now, you know, you get to play against people who are across the state and things like that. But how, how has, what have you heard from, from your other teammates with this program that about some of the experiences that they've had with this program? They love it and they enjoy it. They, just, they really hope that this continues to go on for as long as it can. We're keeping it alive and we're all staying together. What what are some of the difficulties? You know, uh, when you when you're out there on the traditional sports, there's a lot of physicality. You have to practice, and it and it gets tiring. What are some of the things that you do to get better here? That where well, there's difficulty that that forces you to grow. A lot of games, like two that I'm in, Rocket League and League of Legends, require a lot of coordinates and team uh, control. Rocket League, you need a lot. You need like plan strategy. You need to figure out what what teams playing who, and it's a quick pace and fast game. League of Legends, it's a top down game, but it's very strategic in how you play it. And if your team doesn't have a strategy, there's a high chance you won't make it through the game. So what's what's next for you in in this program? What are you what are you hoping to get from this first season at? at, at the eSports program here at Cavern. I hope to make it at state championships, not to just go there to play, but to be there to meet the teams that I'm playing with. The game is a game. Of course, you know, fun, but you can also get mad and stuff, and, you know, a lot of people see it as winning, as you just winning and getting all excited. And I see it as course you know I do that sometimes but when it's some people that I'm playing competitive with I see that as bad sportsmanship to not just me or the team but to everyone even if you don't play and I don't just want to go to state championships I want to be there to see people and how it's changed their lives too and why they come here and the teams that have been there I I want to shake their hand in person and congratulate them on their goals of getting here now for the what would you say to to a school 
No, what would you say to a player who's considering whether or not to participate in, in, in something like this? It just really comes down to time that you have to dedicate. Like, a lot of these games really can be quick and slow, but really depends on your ability to have the time to stay here. You don't have to be good to play. You just gotta be good to stay. What would you what would you say to a school who's considering implementing or starting an esports program? I believe, but it really depends on the school. But everyone, even the smallest people, can have a major impact on the biggest or smallest thing. And a school starting something new is great. They get a chance to try it out, see if they like it, and if it works, it could be a big thing for their students to get into and learn and give them a, another career in life they can follow.